Stanja Balisco here. Um, a little explanation of a the function of a couple of components uh, in a simple audio amplifier. This happens to be figure 5-2, I believe, on uh, page 86 of the Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. But you'll find this diagram in other books of mine as well. The reader's question involves these two resistors right here, R2 and R3, which provide the, bi the bias on the base for this transistor right here, Q1. The reader's question is, why is R2 needed? Can't the uh, circuit work with only R3? Um, he was asking what would happen if R2 were not grounded, that is more or less just disconnected. Why does R2 uh, need to be here in conjunction with R3? Well, these two resistors right here, R2 and R3, bias this transistor at a certain point uh, and notice here's 12 volts, the power supply voltage, and there's ground. And here are these two resistors. Depending upon the values of these two resistors, you will get a specific voltage at this point between them. Both resistors are necessary in order to define that voltage. If R2 were gone, that voltage would be plus 12 volts regardless of the value of R3. If R3 were gone, that voltage would be zero with respect to ground. That is to say zero, the same as common ground, regardless of the value of R2. So if we were to remove R3, this transistor would be cut off. If we were to remove R2, it would probably go into a state of saturation. Neither of those two states, cutoff or saturation, will work at all for a weak signal amplifier such as the one that this diagram portrays. We need to bias this amplifier right here so that it is operating more or less in class A. That means the bias at the base is such that the transistor operates at the middle of the straight line portion of its characteristic curve. I, I don't know if that's going to help my, my, reader, my reader very much, but, but the explanation as to why R2 is, R, is necessary in, in conjunction with R3 is that you, the, by experiment you will determine the voltage at this point to be just right by selecting the ratio of these two resistances properly. As for what their actual values are, that will depend on the impedance of the system that you want to work with. This is probably going to be a high impedance system, so these would be higher value resistors, probably in the thousands of ohms. Right off the top of my head, I would say probably this is around a thousand ohms for R2 and maybe 10 kilo ohms for R3. As for these other resistors, in case you're curious, they basically limit the current through this transistor. R4, of course, is necessary here in order to prevent this output from effectively being short-circuited through the power supply for signal. We need some resistance there to keep that signal from being shorted out to the power supply, which in effect would be shorting it out to ground. On the other hand, down here, this resistor here, R1, actually serves in conjunction with R2 and R3 to bias this transistor Q1 in class A so that it will work at its best as a weak signal radio frequency amplifier. Now, I hope that answers my reader's questions. He had other questions about this uh, 
about some material in this book, Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, a link to which I will provide in the description of this video. Stan Jibalisco saying so long for now. Have a good day.